Okay, today we're going to take a look at a factory trigger group versus a Volkwartzen TG2000 trigger group. The uh, TG2000 is a fully CNC machined um, aluminum trigger housing with all their upgrades. It goes for $273 on their website. I will put a link in the video description so you can go see it yourself. Um, I was a little disappointed in the lack of documentation. Unless it's somewhere on their website, I'm not seeing it. But there's not a whole lot of documentation about how to adjust this. So I wanted to do a quick video showing you some of those adjustments and what you're actually getting for your money. So I've got a trigger group that has a Volkwartzen drop-in kit in it. And this trigger is actually much better in the end as compared to that. It, uh, if you've watched my other video when I did all these trigger units on the trigger scan machine, this came with the lightest trigger pull of them all with the least amount of over travel and the least amount of pre-travel. Now it is $273, so uh, you, you are getting what you pay for on this one. So it, it just depends on what you want. You know, you can get this uh, BX trigger, which is an upgraded factory Ruger part from directly from Ruger. It's about 60 bucks, depending on if you find it on sale or not. So 50, 60 bucks, something like that. I'll put a link to this. This didn't have a bad trigger pull. It's just not on the same level as this. It's an injection molded housing. Uh, you have like a three, 3.2, I think, pound trigger pull. It's not bad. Uh, it's not great. Obviously, this one is a 1.8 pound, I believe, trigger pull. But for the average person, I think this is a, an, an easy way to get into an upgraded trigger. Or if you're building a gun from parts like I did with a lot of these 1022s, just buy this trigger and then you can always send it off. There's uh, companies like Brimstone Gunsmithing where you can send this whole trigger group to and $78 later, they will get it down to supposedly a one and a half pound pull. So that way you'd be in it about 140 bucks and you'd have a lot of the upgrades, but it still is not gonna be the same as a full CNC machined setup like this. So if you want the best or you know one of the best, this is kind of what you're leaning towards. You can see it's a two piece housing. So this whole side here is one piece. And then you see there's two screws here, two Allen head bolts, and then that parting line right there and right there. And this, this side plate comes off. Um, I would recommend not taking it apart if you don't have to. I did take this one apart because I couldn't figure out how to get the Allen into the pre-travel screw. So I'm going to show you that just so you don't have to do the same thing I did. But basically, the other benefit I found is on the factory BX trigger, and this is actually true for all factory triggers, they reset the trigger with this plunger right here. And I always thought there was something wrong with our plungers because they, are, they look like they're cockeyed and... It was not until later I realized that once they mold these, and especially with the metal cast triggers, they have to drill this hole in separately later. And so on the aluminum triggers, it made sense. But I don't know why they need it on a plastic trigger. You would think they'd be able to put that as in a slide and, and mold that in straight. But regardless, uh, that's how they reset the trigger. So it, you're always going to get a little bit of drag there, pushing against that plunger the wrong direction. You know, it's, it's going backwards and on an angle at the same time which isn't the best. And then uh, on the Volkortsen, it uses a torsion spring uh, down here on the trigger. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but there's basically down in here, you can kind of see the leg of that spring right there. It's kind of hard to see, but right there, down around the, the pivot pin on the tr trigger shoe, that resets that. And then in that same space, you get space for a nice over travel stop. So it exposes the Allen head down in here. You can adjust this with an Allen to put more uh, pressure here. And then right now, this is pretty much set as the, I mean, right there, that's, there's basically no over travel. And if you watch my video when I did the, the trigger test, I think this one had like 19 thou of over travel, which is basically nothing. Um, the other thing is you automatically get the auto bolt release. Uh, which is nice, so you don't have to play a three-hand Monty with the bolt and the bolt release to get the bolt back forward. I believe I put this one in this one already. So this one's got one as well, but I added a tandem cross one to this. I did a video on that if you want to see how those are installed. Uh, it also has the 
Paul Clarkson, um, oops, pull the trigger, um, has the extended mag catch, mag release, um, nice metal, metal one, easy to push. The BX triggers also come with a plastic version of the same thing, very similar, kind of depends on what your style looks like. Um, the trigger pull itself is very nice, uh, very light. The shoe itself is nice and smooth. Depends on what you like. Um, nice stylized aluminum trigger. I actually do like the feel of the tandem cross trigger on my finger the more because it's a it's a serrated uh, trigger shoe that just kind of grips my finger a little better. But that's personal preference. This one is great as well. Um, just just feels different. You know, it's kind of hard to hard to explain. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you is the pre-travel and over-travel adjustment. So I already covered the over-travel, put an Allen in here, tighten that up. They are tight. Make sure you get the right size Allen in there so you don't strip it out. And then they are meant to be tight. I think they probably put a little thread locker on there. Just go a little bit until you, you know, you can, you basically want to be able to fire it and get it to release, but not travel anymore. So I basically tighten this up a little bit until it wouldn't fire and then backed off in eighth turn in increments until it would fire. I, t I backed it off just a little bit more just to have a margin of error in there, but the same kind of holds true with the pre-travel. Now the pre-travel was a little bit harder for me to adjust because I couldn't get an Allen in there easily. But essentially you can see the screw head poking out right there. And this is a set screw that is coming in in the meaty area right in here on the inside. And I couldn't quite figure out how to get to it um, I couldn't, I could kind of see it down in here if I was shining a flashlight down in there. But really what it looks like they did is you see this channel right here. An Allen wrench fits in this channel and you can slide it inside there and engage that screw. Uh, it's a little bit hard to get in there. Um, you could probably get it easier. I, I ended up taking off the mag release just by driving this pin out, pulling the mag release out. And I had a lot more room to kind of tweak and put English on the on the Allen wrench because the Allen wrench is also kind of obscured by the sear and disconnector of the trigger group here. So you kind of have to snake it in there, get engaged, make sure you're all the way in with the proper size first and then start tweaking it. And it basically puts preload on the trigger. So I think when I first got this trigger, you could you could you could rock the trigger shoe just a little bit before it engaged, but basically right now, I mean, you can see it's it's there. There's no take up and then wall and then breakthrough wall. It's pretty much on the wall, ready to go, and then pull and it's gone. Uh, so feels great. Make sure all your safety still work and everything. Make sure you don't go too much on there. If you go too much, uh, it won't reset. So you'll, you'll be able to fire it. And then when you're you're holding the trigger still down, you should hear that click. And then reset so there's hardly any reset on this one you can see so click that's reset that's crazy it's a crazy light trigger crazy uh reset great adjustments uh yeah sure it's a kind of expensive trigger but you know when you're getting this kind of features in here if you go buy the aluminum housings i believe uh Te tactical innovation sells a uh, metal housings like this uh, and then by the time you put a good trigger kit in there and all the automatic bolt release and all the mag catch and all that stuff you're going to be up there anyways so if if you're, if you're the type of person that just wants to drop a whole unit in be done have the have one of the best out of the box uh, i don't think you can go wrong here this is the volkortsen tg2000 they're claiming this is a two and a quarter trigger pole uh weight uh in my testing i found it to be in the 1.8 range, um, so I'm not complaining, but uh, I don't know how they how they measured it. Maybe they measured it differently than I did, but that's how I got it. Um, made in the USA from Volkortsen, $273. I'll put a link down there to that one, and then also the BX trigger if you want to go more budget style, but I, can, I don't think you can go wrong either way.